we have a lot of case reports. We know that this can lower, we know exactly how it does it. But some people's cholesterol is so high that even a low fat diet, getting more uh, soluble fiber from beans and peas, even using cholesterol, is not going to get them into the ideal range. If it doesn't, they do need medication because you've got to get your blood into the range that puts you at the lowest possible range. So through lifestyle and complementary medicine, the traditional medicine, if that's what's necessary, that's what you do. Get your, your levels where they should be. Just a couple of points on the cancer model. As I said earlier, 85% of cancers are known to be from our lifestyle behaviors. Only 15 are strongly genetic, we think. And cancer usually shows up for two reasons. Number one, there can be free radical damage that damages the genetic material and causes a mutation to occur, and now you have a cancer cell. Or cells are divided too quickly. And when cells divide too fast, they make more genetic mistakes, and they can't put the brakes on in time, and the cancer cell shows up. So we, we talked a bit about the cell division rates, but we didn't talk about free radicals yet. And yet, I'm sure you have some understanding of free radicals, but I'm just going to review it for a second. Here's what the free radical model looks like. If I take an apple, and I cut it in half, and I expose it to the oxygen and air, we know that the oxygen interacts with the apple and causes it to turn brown after a while. The, the apple is rotting, is that correct? Sure. So now if I take the apple and cut it in half and I squeeze lemon juice on it right away, doesn't it slow down the rate which it rots? It turns brown more slowly. Why? Because the vitamin C and the lemon juice can somehow interact with the oxygen in the air and make it less damaging to the flesh of the apple. In our bodies, it's kind of the same way. The oxygen that we breathe in, 2 to 5 percent of it, actually causes the same kind of rotting effect to, the app, to our bodies as it does to the apple. And so we get this corrosive effect where what's really happening is the oxygen acts like a free radical. It has like an extra hand-waving free. And so it has these electrons going around the nucleus. It's a bit complicated. But it has like an extra one that wants to be paired up with a, another kind of electron going the other way. And so it only has this one hand-waving free. So it just steals an electron from another molecule, randomly tears it off, and now it's very happy. It's like playing double dice. It's got the, it's got the paired electron. But now this molecule that was minding its own business has electrons. Now it's got an extra hand when you're free. So it steals one from the next molecule. So now it's stable, but now this molecule has become a free radical. If this happens to your genetic material, you can rearrange your DNA and trigger a proto-oncogene, right, a gene that could become cancer, you can turn on the cancer gene through free radical damage. So the way that cancer often starts is by exposure to free radicals, including oxygen. Over our lifetime, the oxygen accumulation causes free radical damage. That's why we look older as well, to a certain degree. People say, hey, Dr. Machino, you like this big anti-aging agent. I saw you 10 years ago. You look older today than you did 10 years ago. You haven't stopped the aging process. I say, no, I'm rotting, just like the apple. <laughs> aging is rotting. We can slow down the rate at which we rot. That's the good news. By decreasing our exposure to unnecessary free radicals and building up the antioxidant defense. The same way you put the vitamin C on the, plant, the flesh of the apple, if you increase the antioxidants in your body, you can slow down the rate of free radical damage as well, slow down the aging process, decrease the genetic damage that comes from that. But let's look at the free radicals that we're exposed to. As I said earlier, 30% of all cancers are linked to cigarette smoking. There's no, this is the maximum dose of free radicals you could ever have. And so it comes through that there's genetic damage, you run into trouble. But also be careful with smoked meats and smoked fish. Night, no processed meats and alcohol contain nitrites in the gut. They become nitrosamines, leading to increased risk of uh, colorectal cancer. Remember, colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death. Pan fried meats, charred meats have this charred material uh, that uh, are heterocyclic amines. They do mutagenic damage to our cells as well. They're linked to cancer risk. Your body can only tolerate one alcoholic drink in a 24-hour period. So, of course, my students at the college say to me, so Dr. Machino, I guess I better get a bigger glass. I need a bigger glass. <laughs> so, that means you have a five-ounce five glass of wine, 12-ounce beer, or, you know, a one-ounce of hard liquor. That's all your body can metabolize safely. When you go beyond that, you're doubling risk of breast cancer, colon cancer, according to the Nurses Health Study, the Health Professionals Follow-up Study. Other studies show that you start to increase free radical damage to your body that leads to cancer when you go beyond that. I'll be careful how many x-rays you allow a doctor to uh, order on you over your lifetime. Make sure it's really necessary to have those x-rays and CAT scans done. This is not a game. Ultraviolet light from the sun and tanning beds, you know it causes free radical damage to the skin. That's how skin cancer starts. Free radical damage from UV light. And of course, oxygen, which is unavoidable. Next slide. 
Studies suggest that higher intake levels and higher blood levels of certain antioxidants can protect us against some of these free radicals. We're going to be exposed to some free radicals. You want to try to minimize your exposure. And so if you boost your levels by getting lead into your, into your body every day, dosages that are significant, you can slow down the rate of rotting and free radical damage that occurs. This seems to be the, a general nice cocktail to take. I put all these nutrients into our high-potency multivitamin and mineral, as you're going to see. So, Because what I used to do is sort of take them all separately, but you can get them all now in one concoction, which I'll show you later. You should know this, because fruit and vegetables contain so many antioxidants and other protective nutrients, People that eat five to seven fruit and vegetable servings a day have half the cancer rates compared to people who have less than that. That's how striking it is. Bruce Ames, one of the, 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 the foremost leading experts in cancer research, in fact, the test for carcinogenicity of a substance was developed, it's the Ames test, Dr. Bruce Ames. He says, it's unbelievable, but those fruit and vegetables contain so many anti-cancer nutrients when people get more, cancer rates are half. Ah, so that has to be part of the story as well. <laughs> the the high-potency multivitamin that I put together for myself already has the 1,000 milligrams of C and the 400E. It has the B50 complex. Next slide. It has the XM extra calcium at 500 milligrams, which most people are missing. A little bit of iron, not enough to be toxic. It's got the zinc, which is an important antioxidant. 100 micrograms of selenium, more than most multis would have has the extra lutein to protect your eyes from macular degeneration, and the lycopene to protect the prostate gland and the cervix of the uterus. These are important antioxidants for those, for those tissues at optimal dosages. Here's what I used to do. Maybe you can write to the store. I used to walk into a health food store or a drug store, and I'd buy like a regular multivitamin, just you know, like a regular one, and, I, and then I'd look at it and say, mm, there's not really enough vitamin C here, so I'd, I'd buy an extra C, I'd buy a multi, then I'd buy extra C. There's already C here, but I've got to buy extra. Then I'd buy extra E. Then I bought extra beta carotene, I bought extra selenium, I bought extra lycopene, I bought extra calcium. You understand? I, then I bought a B50 complex. I'm buying eight different things just to get vitamins and minerals. It's ridiculous. So when I went to work for Adiva, the first thing I did was create this high potency multivitamin cocktail that I wanted for myself. So I could just have one bottle that had everything in it at the dosage that I think is highly meaningful from the standpoint of prevention and optimal wellness. So that's the free radical story. What about how do you slow down the rate of cell division? We're getting near the end, so I just want to emphasize this. If you want to reduce cancer, what you want is for your cells to divide from one generation to the next generation slowly. Slow down the rate of cell division. Because if a cancer cell starts to emerge, cancer, the DNA says, oh, is a cancer cell emerging? I'm going to turn on my tumor suppressor genes. It's going to cause a cell to commit suicide. It's not going to be a problem. But when cells are divided too quickly, it bypasses that regulatory step. So how do you slow down the rate of cell division? Make sure you're getting that 1,000 IUs of vitamin D every day. And you can get your blood levels checked. If it's above 85 nanomoles per liter, beautiful. If it's below, you better get it up there. Calcium helps to protect the cells of the colon against this effect of rapid cell division. So getting the 12 to 1,500 milligrams of calcium we talked about earlier, not only is good for your bones, but helps to reduce risk of colorectal cancer. Since colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death, it's an important one to guard against. Vitamin D and calcium really help. And then you need the right essential fatty acids. How many of you already take an essential oils type supplement? Probably many. The reason it's so great is because your cells take the good essential fats from fish, from flaxseed, from borax seed, take those essential oils, make hormones out of it that slow down the rate of cell division. And because our diets are so high in all these omega-6 fats that come from meat and corn oil and sunflower seed, that you need to counter it as best you can with, I believe, supplementation from borage seed, flaxseed, and fish oil, uh, which I put into nature's essential oil. So that kind of combination every day, I wouldn't go a day without it personally. And of course, try to minimize your exposure to these lifestyle behaviors and dietary factors. Here's the other thing of great importance. Remember I said that in certain parts of the world, prostate cancer is there, but it's not clinically important? It's true for all the cancers. That we all are walking around with some cancerous cells that eventually start to form little clusters somewhere in the breast, in the colon, in the brain, in the prostate <coughs> gland. And in order for 
solid tumors, this is not leukemia and lymphoma now, but for solid tumors, in order for them to really get any traction and grow, they need blood. You see, no tumor in your body can ever grow beyond one millimeter in size by itself. It grows to be one millimeter, and that's it. Unless you get some additional blood and nutrients, it can't go beyond one millimeter. Nothing's going to kill you that's one millimeter. You can have a one millimeter tumor in your prostate gland or your breast. It's, that's fine. That's not going anywhere. But what cancer cells do when they come malignant, they get malignant, is they start to secrete chemicals that attract blood to go into the tumor. See that? That's called angiogenesis. And once it can get blood, it can continue to grow and thrive. And now the tumor mass gets large, and some of the cells can break off and go into the lymphatics or the bloodstream, travel to the distal site in the body. Now you have metastasis. Now you've got a whole new